In this video it's all about your kit lens and why a kit lens will improve your photography, videography and it's all you need. But before we're diving into it, let me show you what you can capture with a kit lens. Yo, yo, yo guys, welcome back to the channel. As mentioned already today, it's all about your kit lens and why a kit lens is probably all you need when starting out photography, videography, or you bought your first camera. We're all getting hyped up about fast prime lenses. You need to F2 lens, you need to F1.4 lens, but in fact, you probably don't and you're good off starting with your kit lens for the first year or maybe one and a half years before you decide to buy a new lens. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a breakdown what I think why your kit lens will help you improve your photography and videography. And it doesn't matter if you shoot Canon, Sony, Lumix, Fuji, it really doesn't matter. It comes down to the general aspect point of the kit lens. So why would you decide to stick to your kit lens, go with your kit lens, if they're of course faster, and better lenses out like a prime lens with a wide aperture of f2. I would say price. Price is definitely unbeatable. Right now if you buy a camera with the kit lens together combined in a kit, you usually can't beat the price for your lens. The lens usually got an average zoom range of 18 to 55, somewhere around your 27 to 82.5 millimeter, in my case with the 18 to 55 in full frame terms, or even like a 24 to 105, you got a nice zoom range, your average focal length, what captures a lot of different focal length and you just got a very good all-rounder lens. You can shoot wide at 24 mil, you can zoom in, you shoot at 105 mil or even at 83 mil. Depends what sort of brand you use if you shoot full frame or you shoot on a crop sensor camera. So the focal length will cover a lot of different prime focal lengths as well. Therefore having a prime, having a kit lens is definitely worth considering because you cover a lot of focal length at the same time. Another point would be OIS or lens stabilization. You might still using a camera body which does not have IBIS. So you got some sort of stabilization when taking pictures so you can slow down your shutter speed and still get a nice sharp image when you handheld your camera. So definitely the majority of kit lenses are built with OIS or lens stabilization. So definitely handy to have as well. There are so many different kit lenses out, so many different apertures out, f-stops out. You got a variation of different kit lenses. Some having a f4 aperture, some having a f2.8 to 4 aperture or even f4 to 7.1, 3.5 to 5.6. Personally speaking, I don't think this is necessarily a downside to your kit lens because it will slow your process of taking pictures down and you will think more about your pictures, what f-stop you're taking this image right now. Let's say in my case with my kit lens, I'm having a Fujifilm 18-55 f2.8 to 4 lens. So if I zoom out to 55mm, I'm shooting at a f4 aperture and I just need to rethink my whole image what sort of ISO do I need, where my shutter speed sits at and what is my aperture like. So you just slow down your process and you think more about your whole image. So a variable aperture is not necessarily a downside. So here are two ways or my two ways how you can get the most out of your kit lens with a variable aperture. So first of all, you could decide to set your camera into aperture priority mode and let the camera decide about your shutter speed and your ISO and you choose the focal length and the aperture you would like to set your camera to when taking an image. So therefore it's very easy. The camera decides your ISO, shutter speed and you decide the aperture with your zooming process, what sort of aperture, what sort of focal length you wanna use. 
this is one way how to get quite a bit of good images out of your kit lens. The second way would be when I using my kit lens and I'm out and about, let's say I do some street photography or travel photography, I do set my aperture to the smallest, widest aperture possible. What I mean by that is if you, let's say, got to f2.8 to 4 aperture zoom lens, then I do set my aperture to f4, the smallest but widest aperture I can use. So that means when I zoom, my aperture won't change. Let's say you got an aperture zoom lens of f4 to 7.1, then I would set, and set my aperture to 7.1 and my aperture won't change when I zoom. I can set my ISO, I can set my shutter speed and my aperture is set and I can go out, take my images and no, don't need to worry about my aperture will change in a process when taking images. Of course, you could also say you bump up your ISO a bit by 400, 600 ISO instead of 200 ISO to compensate for the factor of like when you zoom that your aperture will change. So you would set your ISO automatically a bit higher to compensate for the change of aperture. And then you set your shutter speed, you take your image and you're good to go. And if you're worried about that you don't get enough background blur with the aperture of f4 or 7.1 f8, just check my background right now out. I'm filming on the aperture of f4 and I still get enough separation background blur to make me stand out in a footage film right now. But also just go as close as your lens lets you focus on your subject. And you will see even with the aperture of f4, 7.1, you will still get a nice background blur. Maybe not, not as much as with the aperture of f2, but it still gives you enough background separation, enough background blur to make your image pop. And if you think about a lot of images which get shot in a studio, separation will be created by light and you shoot automatically already a higher f-stop of f8, f12 maybe, to make your subject as crisp and clean as possible. And you wanna get more contrast into your image with a higher f-stop as well. So with that said guys today, I hope those little insight, how to get more out of a kit lens, been helpful. Let me know if you still shoot on a kit lens, what's your experience with a kit lens. And with that said, my friend, like, comment, subscribe. I'm gonna see you in another video very soon. Until then. Bye.